G. McRae, and this is Perspective. My guest today is Christina Kutu, Executive Director of the Center, Center for Social Justice and Good Works. Excellent. Welcome, yes, Christina. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. Can you explain to our viewers what the Center for Social Justice and Good Works is all about? Sure. Uh, so the Center of Social Justice and Good Works started approximately almost three years ago, actually. The idea itself uh, was around for a few years prior to that, but about three years ago uh, is when we opened the door. And it was started by a group of individuals in our community who saw that there was a need. And this was identified because they were doing research on the community, and in particular, Frank Sarlo, who is a well-known community member. He's the chair of our board. And he, at the time, was um, doing his dissertation and doing some interviews and found out that uh, a lot of leaders in our community felt that there was a lack of youth leadership skills training, as well as entrepreneurship training in regards to encouraging those to start small businesses. So at the time that these discussions were going on, there was a group of individuals who had started a project at Precious Blood Cathedral, which is located on Queen Street, to create what they call a gathering space at that large cathedral in Sault Ste. Marie. Originally, the plan was that the Center for Social Justice would be a part of that gathering space, but at the time, the bishop, he, he thought that it would be better if the center was incorporated as a nonprofit. And so in August 2015, uh, we were incorporated. I started as the executive director, and we started on this wonderful journey of trying to create positive change together in our community. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And you deal with uh, all ages at we the do. center. Yeah. Well, we have various programs that we specialize in with um, different groups. Uh, our youth leadership program is run um, at various times throughout the year, and it's eight weeks of curriculum-based training, and we also have partnered with the John Howard Society, and they do a couple of sessions for us as well in regards to problem-solving, decision-making, and conflict resolution. And we teach for eight weeks approximately the principles of community mobilization and how to create positive change in your community by participating in small ways, by volunteering, by getting involved. So this leadership training program is completely volunteer-based. Uh, we deliver it at the center with the help of volunteers. We break our sessions into three-hour modules, which the first hour is a discussion curriculum-based around what Frank Sarlo has learned through his dissertation and his discussions with 31 local leaders. And we do this over eight weeks, so the first hour curriculum. Second hour is we have a local leader who comes in as a guest speaker. So we've had politicians, business leaders, we've had people from educational institutions, it's been really varied. And they come and they tell their story about leadership in our community and how they have struggled but also survived and came on top of any opportunities that presented themselves because of their struggle. So it's a really wonderful thing to see. Fabulous. Yeah. How does a young person get involved in the program if they wanted to take the leadership program? Um, well, because we're a nonprofit, we run it based on funding. Uh, we're looking at another intake, hopefully in September, and this intake we're going to focus on working with some of the high school students. Previously, we've done uh, university and college graduates, and we've done really well. They've helped us run our recreation program for children, which during the school year is run in four areas of our community, and it's a free program. And this is our way of teaching them how to organize events and get involved. Uh, but we're looking at September for another intake, focusing on high school and teaching them community mobilization and how you can work together as a team. They learn the various structures of how boards work in different positions and the importance that every role in the community mobilization has. And it's not just the person that's the chair of the board that matters. It's every single person that shows up to volunteer their time. So would the student be, uh, that's in the program volunteer to be in the program? Yes. Or it's not mandatory for them? No, it's not mandatory. And it is for individuals who know that, you know, they have an aspiration to make a positive change. They want to get involved. Maybe they're not sure how to get involved. Maybe they're just looking at increasing the skills that they have. So they can contact the center. Um, and we're available Monday through Friday. We also have a website. And if they're in interested in volunteering, they let us know what they want to do. In some cases, we've had people volunteer and they've wanted to run their own project and they just haven't known where to start and so we I give them that I can imagine the uh, benefit of being a young person and uh, obtaining all that knowledge when you're young mm -hmm. going forward the benefits of that must be astronomical yeah. to start at such an early age rather than 
Well, I think the um, benefits really are yeah. when they see the positive impact that they can have in their community. And really, it's just time that they're putting in. And they're learning something. And it's nice to see the inspiration um, that they have on their faces. When we started the recreation program, what really astonished us the most was we knew that the children coming to this free recreation program, they were playing sports, they were getting a snack, they were socializing with their friends, you know, it was some time away from the house. We knew they were going to have a good time. But what we weren't expecting is how happy the volunteers were going to be. And we have them come back again and again and again. Excellent. And so, yeah, it's been great. We're just going to go to break and we'll be right back with Christina Coutu. Uh, talking about the Social Justice Center. Yeah, the Center for Social Justice Sorry, and Good Works. Center for yeah. Social Justice and Good Works. We'll be right back after this. Stay with us. You're watching Perspective. I'm Catherine McRae, and my guest today is Executive Director Christina Coutu of Center for Social Justice and Good Works. Christina, yeah. uh, before the break, you were talking about the, the many programs and the youth initiatives yeah. um, that happen at the center. What are some of the barriers that were recognized um, when the center was envisioned? Uh, well, going back to the discussion around the fact that we focused on leadership and entrepreneurship training, um, it was identified that there's a lot of great educational institutions in the community that were teaching great things, but people were graduating or coming out of their post-secondary or high school educations without thinking about getting into entrepreneurship. And we weren't really sure why. So we did some discussions. Our first program we ran with the District Sault St. Marie Social Services Administration Board, where we worked with, originally it was nine of their clients to help them start small businesses. And from there, we seven of those completed the program completely, which was 12 weeks long, and five of those started businesses. Oh, wow. So today, we have approximately four of those still running. Um, and what we learned was the reason that they did well was because of the one-on-one -on -one assistance they needed. There's a lot of people who have a desire to run a business who really want the benefits of being self-employed and have a passion in something, but perhaps they don't have the education that backs them up so that they can walk into, say, the EDC with a business plan to apply for funding. That's a lot to figure it out all on your own, too. As a oh, absolutely. Person. So you actually do the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Yeah, so what we've learned, and it's not even like we went into this thinking that, oh, yeah, everybody's going to be coached one-on-one. -on -one. It was something that we learned as we went along. And it was the fact that uh, individuals, they might have a barrier. For example, one of our individuals, she wanted to start a, a cleaning company, but she didn't have the license for the vehicle that she needed to drive and she hadn't had one so it took one of our staff members going with her to the license bureau and waiting with her and providing that emotional support she needed to get through something that had been quite intimidating for her in her life mm -hmm. it made a huge difference so something like that where you think how much effort did it actually take for that staff person to take that woman to the license bureau not a lot it was just the emotional support she needed so that's where we and come in. And it must in. have been a rewarding accompli accomplishment for her, too, to obtain that. Absolutely. I mean, she, at that point, had three children, and she had never had a driver's license before. And so it was, you know, here's the book, here's how the test is run, and off you go. And she realized after, it didn't have to be a scary thing. And she had built it up in her mind as something that was. So um, the other thing we know is that it's not a 9 to 5 job. Um, there are times where, you know, you're going to get a text message at night from somebody who needs a little boost or a nudge or a positive affirmation. And, and it's easy to do these things because we do it for our friends all the time. And we realize we have a lot of really cool people in our community and a lot of people that want to make changes in their personal life and those around them, but they don't know where to start. So it's not just the, uh, the technical skills of entrepreneurship, but it's the emotional s support yeah. and that support network that's provided as well to them. Yeah. It's, we, we knew from the start that they needed to be partnered with business mentors to help them through the business aspect of it. What we didn't realize was that they needed some of those life skills coaching. So for example, if you're running a business and you need to have the doors open at 9 o'clock in the morning, you need to train yourself to get to that business so that you're there prior to 9 o'clock so your customers aren't waiting outside. These things for somebody in business who's used to doing it seems really straightforward, but if you have to train yourself to get 
you know, two or three kids out the door to the bus and lunch is prepared and, and yourself up early enough, maybe you don't have a vehicle, et cetera. There's barriers that you need to get through to accomplish your goals. And you can have an organization like the Center for Social Justice and Good Works there to support you in encouragement so that you, you know, okay, well, maybe you didn't get there today, but it's important you do, so what can you do tomorrow to implement strategies to do it properly? Fantastic. I yeah. wish there was something like that for me when I was a young person. <laughs> I think 100 years okay. ago. <laughs> we need to go to break and we'll be right back. You're watching Perspectives. St please stay with us. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, I'm Catherine G. McRae. You're watching Perspectives. With my guest today, Christina Katu, Executive Director for the Center for Social Justice and Good Works. Yes. Christina, you were talking about the various programs and trainings that are offered there. Mm -hmm. um, I understand there's a, a project initiative that's underway, has started at the Center. Perhaps you could tell us, our viewers, about that. Yeah. Uh, I love how life can be so unexpected sometimes. And we going along with these projects we're learning a lot about what people need and we're also realizing that there's only so many resources that we have available to us so how do we make something bigger and better with limited money um, we started talking about some of those needs that we saw in this first session of our, our um, five entrepreneurs that we helped to start and um, it was determined that there was a need to learn retail, wholesale, and manufacturing skills because a lot of individuals think that business is just opening a retail store. You're selling shoes, you're selling purses, you're whatever. There's so much more than the just other aspects that. behind the scenes. Yeah, to make I mean, of it. all you get to see is the icing, and there's so much more that goes into that cake, right? So, um, in order to teach the retail, wholesale, and manufacturing, we know that we need something that's a hands-on basis to learn from. And so uh, Frank Sarlo, again, the chair of the Center for Social Justice and Good Works, he was talking to these local leaders about what the needs are and about this retail wholesale manufacturing idea. And we knew that we'd be able to create the curriculum. We knew things like it needs to be a year long in order to create a really deep-rooted change. It needs to take at least a year. Um, they need one-on-one -on -one support. All those things we knew, but what we didn't know was, okay, what's the avenue of teaching? And we came up with chocolate. And that came about because Frank Sarlo went on a trip and he was over in Europe and he was in the small community of 300 people and he went into this beautiful little coffee shop and there was all these chocolates behind the counter. Mm, who doesn't love chocolate? Who doesn't love chocolate, exactly. And I get asked a lot about the samples. So just so you know, I know you're going to say, yes, you can have some after. But <laughs> um, So anyways, fast tracking to now, we were really being directed and piloted towards this chocolate company. So we started doing our research and when things are... And I'm not trying to jinx myself, I always want to knock on wood, but if things are easy, then you know you're on the right path. And it was, we called the um, people in Milan who had the chocolate equipment, they got us in touch with someone in, in New York, he loved our idea, so he found different equipment he thought would be better for our project. And then I was happened to be going to upstate New York, mentioned that to him, he had a friend that had a chocolate company only eight miles from where I was staying in New York. Like, Everything really Just fell into place. Yeah, and 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 so you know we started on this path. We had the business plan going. We started applying for funding. We approached the District Sault Saint Marie Social Services Administration Board, did a presentation to them, and they've agreed to provide some funding for a five-year term, um, based on outcomes, of course. We have been approved from uh, some of our other funders, which I'm not allowed to say yet because they like <laughs> to uh, have the politicians involved. But I want to say thank you to them in advance. So we're doing exciting. really well. Yeah, and we're right now we're working with um, our other funder, FedNor, and they're really supportive of us. This is a social enterprise in the fact that we're doing training, which is the social side of things, and we're doing the enterprise, which is the chocolate manufacturing company and itself. And as a real business as well. As a real business. So what, what happens and why it's a social enterprise is because all of the profits that we make from this chocolate manufacturing and the chocolate product is reintegrated and rerouted back into the company, which allows us to offer more training because you know, the thing about our training programs is they're free to the individuals who are taking them. So something like this, which we approximately, it'll cost about $5,000 per person to run per year. Um, somebody coming to our program who has low income, newcomers, uh, minorities, youth, 
uh, women, anybody who has, we can identify as having that need, are, we take them into our program and give them these skills. And so the funds, again, from the chocolate are reintegrated back into the programming. Good thing I'm not in the program. I'd be eating all the profits. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're going to need some taste testers. Oh. So, I mean, But <laughs> the beautiful thing, too, is the participants, when they create the chocolate, they earn a portion of the proceeds from the chocolate that they make and they sell. So they're going to learn how to make it, how to retail it, and how to, ho how to sell it and earn a portion of the profit so that when they go work at an employer, they understand the amount it works for that employer to run a business because it's more than just, like yeah. I said, the icing that we see. Wow. It's all the other ingredients that you take. That's fantastic. We have to go to break, yeah. and we'll be right back with Perspective. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Perspective. I'm Catherine G. McRae, and my guest is Christina Kitu, Executive Director with the Centre for Social Justice and Good Works. Christina, before the break, you were talking about all the skills that um, the participants lead, uh, learn rather, in the uh, leadership programs. Yeah. The one thing that I hear repeatedly uh, from employers, and I've experienced myself, it's very difficult to find qualified dedicated employees. Yeah. It, it's an ongoing challenge uh, here and really all over today it is, um, yeah. to bring on young people that will stay with your company and have the, the skills to carry out their job. What does uh, being a participant in one of your programs, what does that person bring away when they actually go and um, get their first job? Uh, so we're teaching people how to start a business from the ground up and how important every aspect of that business startup is. Um, and the reason we're doing this is because when they complete the program, we know that they're going to an, um, an employer and they're able to say, I've learned these skills and I understand how difficult and how much work it takes to be an entrepreneur and, and appreciates the, the work that the entrepreneur and their employer does so that they become better employees. Um, this means that if it's a Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, you need to show up for work because your employer, there's a good chance as a, as a small business owner, has already put in 60, 65, 80 hours of work that week. So it's important for the employer to also have time with their family, time away from the, the job. You need to take your personal time to take a break, and employees need to understand their important role in this because we really are doing it all together. Our tagline at the center is creating positive change together. So how do you make a business better is when everybody works together. So what they, when they attend our program, in order to move into the manufacturing role, you have to attend at least 85% of the in-class sessions. Um, the reason being is because when they complete my program, I want them to be able to go to that employer and the employer knows they were reliable, they were dependable, we know that they're going to show up on time, we know that they're going to work hard. Um, by taking this program, we get to know people on that individual level and I'm able to say to an employer, I can recommend this person because I know through the last year they have completed tasks A, B, and C and I can speak to their uh, abilities because of the training they've taken. So it's like they're coming into maybe even their first job but it's like they've got some real world uh, yeah. entrepreneur experience and what they need to do to maintain that right. job and be right. an excellent employee. Right, and you never know what's changed in someone's life. Um, you know, you could have been on a certain career path and you experienced a trauma or a business shutdown or, or a multitude of reasons why things change and you find that you need to get yourself into a new training program. Uh, we believe in being non-judgmental. We're, we're open and, and open with everybody. We just encourage people to be honest with us, to be honest with each other, to respect each other. Um, we're open and inclusive, and that means for everybody. So even if you might have a problem with someone in the program, but it doesn't give you to r the right to take away from their learning experience. Um, but again, we have great partners, as I've mentioned, who help us deliver programming in regards to conflict resolution, time management. Which is part of the real world. I mean, you're, you're not necessarily going to be on a job where you, you love everybody. Right. So you need to learn how to deal right. with people that, you know, maybe rub you the wrong way. Right. But you can definitely learn how to love parts, parts of a job. And I mean, 
every career you have it's not going to be well i mean if you're in a job where it's one hundred percent lovely all the time good for you but for the most part there's going to be a certain aspect of it that you're not going to fully enjoy but you still have to do in order to support the other eighty percent of the job you do enjoy so just help giving people the skills and strategies necessary to get through that last twenty percent so that they can really achieve their goals and also to be that extra support they need there's a lot of people in our community who don't have family who don't have spouses, partners, whatever, children that can support them and they're by themselves. So if you're by yourself and you don't have anybody to support you and encourage you, then why would you create any sort of change positive at all? So that's really important, I think, is to bring that human aspect back Absolutely. into our world. Yeah, so which is missing in a lot of in Unfortunately, a lot of yeah, but today. there's a lot of good people here. So I know that we have a community that's able to get through difficulties and and encourage each other and I mean we're so friendly excellent yeah wow it sounds like a fabulous program we have to go to break and we'll be right back with Christina Kitu and you're watching perspective please stay with us Welcome back. I'm Catherine G. McRae. You're watching Perspective. My guest is Christina Kitu, Executive Director of Center for so Social Justice and Good Works. Christina, before the break, we were talking about the various aspects of what the students learn in the uh, entrepreneur program. Mm -hmm. When they've completed the program and they're, they're ready for either their own, starting their own business or coming on stream as an employee, in an existing business, what, what are they bringing with them? How confident are they in their skills? Well, the program is a year long, so as I mentioned earlier, I strongly believe it takes a minimum of a year to create that really deep-rooted change that you need in order to create positive change in your life. So when they complete our programs, we have three avenues of success that we direct them on. One is, of course, to be an entrepreneur and start a business, and we direct them towards some of our many wonderful community partners, such as the EDC, the CDC, the BDC. There's lots of avenues and, and resources to help with the business. We also give them the confidence to, as you mentioned, get a job, work for an employer. Um, there's a lot of positive skills, not only on the work and the work you do, but also just personally that you learn and, and your ability to provide for your family, all these things do wonderful things in your life. And then the other avenue is to go back to school and return to education. So we've been working with some of our partners locally to create paths into their programming. So when people finish this program, they know that there's potential to do really whatever you want. So it's a holistic program of sort of covering off all, all aspects with the support. Yeah. And, and it's turned into that, and it's not that we necessarily started that way, but that's the way that I am born and bred, and that's the way I've done things. And I do, I am a person that looks at, at my cup as being half full. And uh, I know that there's things that definite can, definitely can go wrong, but if you practice um, trying to get through them and focus on the positive outcomes from the aftermath, then um, you can appreciate where you came from. And also, anything we've been through, it helps us relate to clients and to the people that are walking through our door. So are you actually helping build frustration tolerance then with the students? So That'd be a great way uh, to say so it. So they're not bailing out, you know, right. with the first right. uh, glitch in the road kind yeah. of thing. I say the 80-20 rule quite a bit, and I believe that. It's like 80% can go really well, but 20% is going to be tough. And in that 20%, when you need some extra hand and you need some extra time, we're so blessed in our community that we're big enough but small enough that we can help each other. And, and now with technology, there's so many more resources out there. So I just encourage people to find a dream, find a goal, and don't set up your own barriers. Don't tell you why you can't do it. Figure out ways to achieve it. And if you don't get to that exact goal, oftentimes you're directed somewhere that you end up being better off than you were originally. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So instead of why you can't is why not? Yeah, exactly. What can I do? Exactly. So it's a matter, matter of changing one letter, right? Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. So how many students would you have in the program at any given time? Uh, so our leadership training program, we've really limited it to about 10. Uh, when we do our intakes for this program, the chocolate company, which that's not going to start until probably 2019, early 2019, because we have to figure out logistics and whatnot. But we limit it to, to about 10 or 12 because 
we feel that if you go any bigger than that, then you can't connect into individually with people. And are they actually um, connecting with each other and, and playing off each other's skills as well, yeah, the they, students? The amazing thing is, you know, I, re I re recall fondly, um, we did one program and there was a gentleman in there and he was so helpful towards everybody and you wouldn't have known. So, yeah, it's Excellent. really great, yeah. So, Christine, I want to thank you for being on the show today. And if, is there a thought or um, an idea you'd like to leave with our viewers about the Center of Social Justice and Good Works? Our tagline is creating positive change together. And that's because we know that if everybody does just one small piece, we can create dramatic, huge, positive changes for our community. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching Perspective. I'm Catherine G. McRae. Till next time, what's your perspective? Thank you.